everyone! This week we're creating a spooky Halloween snow globe. The first thing you'll need to do is go to the link in the description where you can print these patterns and then cut them out. And then we're just going to focus on this piece for now. Take an X-Acto knife and you'll want to cut out these holes in the windows and the door. And then just cut along these lines. So just starting with the windows, just cut each of those pieces out so it should look like this. Next I'm taking a Cricut scoring stylus, you can use whatever you'd like, and just go along each of these tabs and fold lines and score all of them. And it's easiest if you use a ruler to help guide the line. And then just repeat this on all of these fold lines. And also on the fold line on the door, so it looks like this once you've done that. So now I'm taking this pattern purple paper to make the house out of, so I'm turning it over so the good side is facing down, and then I'm just taking this house pattern and tracing all around it with a pencil. And then make sure to trace also the insides of the windows and the door. And then once you've done that, take your score tool and just score each of those tabs and each of the fold lines in the center as well. And then here, just go around here and mark a line. Don't score it. Then you're going to cut that out and then just take your X-Acto knife and cut the pieces out of the windows and door. So it should look like this. And then on this back area, just cut along those lines, but don't fold it back. Once you've done all of that, just take the house and fold it on all those fold lines. Then take the door pattern and trace it onto some black paper and score the fold line. Then take that rectangular piece and trace it twice onto the same black paper. Go ahead and cut those out and then fold the fold line on the door. Now we're going to attach the door, so just bend that tab so it's kind of coming forwards and put some glue on it and then just stick it right inside the side of the door. And now we're going to put the house together, so just put glue along each of those tabs and then press it to the wall next to it. Now to put the roof pieces on, just take one of those rectangle pieces, put glue on the tabs, and then just press it in place. Then take the other one, repeat the same process. Now the house is put together and it should look like this. You should have this flap back here to put a tea light in the house. So that is the finished house. Next you'll need a quart sized wide mouth mason jar and the house is a bit of a tight fit so the jar needs to be at least this size or larger. It's a 32 ounce jar. And then go ahead and cut out these patterns. And I'm just going to take an X-Acto knife and cut out the face on this jack-o-lantern. So it looks like this once it's ready. So I'm just going to take the bat and trace it onto some black paper and the ghost onto some white paper and the pumpkin onto some orange with a green stem. So I made five of the bats, three ghosts and one pumpkin, but feel free to make as many as you would like. So now we're going to prepare the house to go inside the jar. It works best if you can raise up the house a bit, so I just took a paper cup and I cut it off so it was about this tall and then I glued it to the lid with some hot glue and this just raises the house up so you can see the bottom of it better. So it will go just like this on the cup and the lid and then go inside the jar. So this way it better fills the jar. So just go ahead and put some hot glue on the bottom of the house and then just glue it to the bottom of that cup. So it looks like this once it's attached. And it will go just like this. So next you'll need some fishing line or really any kind of really thin thread will work for this. And we're just going to use this to hang the bats from to look like they are floating in the air. And then just carefully press the string into the glue. So it looks like this. And then put the house in the jar and decide where you want the bat to be and how far back. And then measure the string and cut it. And then it's a little tricky, but put some hot glue on the end of that string. 
it only takes a little bit. And then if you can, get your hand inside the jar and just carefully stick it to the top of the jar. And then you can put the house in and decide if you like where it's placed and adjust it if you don't. So it ended up hanging right there. And then you'll just repeat this with more of the bats hanging them around the jar wherever you'd like. And I like to do them at different lengths to add some variety. And if you have glue that shows on the back of the bat, you can cover it with a black Sharpie to make it less visible. So again, just putting my hand in the jar to stick that to the top. And then just putting the house in to see if I like where it's placed. Then for the ghosts, I took one of the ghosts and I put some glue on just the very ends. And then just glued it to the back of the house like this and you want to make sure that you'll still be able to get the house in and out of the jar wherever you place it. Then I took another ghost and I wanted this one to be on the back of the jar so I just put some glue on the back and just tapped it in place right there. And then this ghost I wanted to be coming out of the house so I just put a little bit on the edge and then just put it in the doorway like that. Then I took another bat and I wanted this to be on the back of the jar. Put some glue on it and put it in place there. So I'm just placing things in a variety of locations just to make it more interesting. So it looks like this at this point. Adding another bat. And if you can't get your hand inside the jar, you could always take a black sharpie and just draw some on on the back of the jar. So it looks like this. And adding another one here at the top. So it looks like this at this point, although I can't stand the jar up, so I can't quite show you how the bats float right now. But now I decided to add a moon, so I just took a small circular object and traced it onto some yellow-orange paper and cut that out, and then I just traced it again so it looks like a crescent moon. And then I cut that out. So it looked like this, and then I'll just decide where I want to place it, where there's kind of an open space, and then I just glued it in place inside the jar. So it looks like this. Finally, I have some of this Halloween black Spanish moss that I got from Michael's. And I'm just going to take some of that and glue it around the cup just to cover it up at the bottom of the house. And make sure you don't use too much so it won't interfere with screwing on the lid. So it looked like this when I was finished. Then finally we're going to take that jack lantern we made earlier and just decide where you want to place it. Just place it right in front of the house and then just use some hot glue to glue it to the moss. So at this point the house should look like this. And then the last step is to take a tea light and put it inside the house and then just kind of close that flat back up and then put it inside the jar and you can hold this part of the lid in place and then screw the outer part of the lid on. For the full effect of the tea light you can dim the lights and that is your finished Halloween snow globe. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more Halloween videos from my channel I will put some on screen and feel free to subscribe so you won't miss any future ones. I hope you have a great day.